Welcome to part two of Daldo Library's virtual exhibit. As promised, we're going to have a special treat by Dennis. He's going to give us um, a demonstration on the process of starting at a start to finish on an oil skate. Thank you, Dennis. So today we like to paint this painting. It's called uh, Before Sandy. And um, over here I have demonstrated by use of photography the various steps that we will go over very briefly to come up with this painting right here, which is basically the same painting as this, but I did it at two different times. So first what we'll do is pick out of paints, of course. We need various paints for the colors that you're going to be using. So we're going to be using sap green, and we're going to be using some Mars black, some ultramarine blue, some burnt umber, alizarin crimson, and some yellow ochre, and some burnt sienna deep, along with some raw sienna. We're also using uh, Pramalba white, which is a nice creamy white. And these are all oil-based paints. Uh, when you use oil-based paints, it's good to use odorless turpentine or odor, odorless uh, mineral spirits. And it's also good at various times to use a medium uh, to give uh, layers to your paintings. Uh, the tools we use would be various brushes. We're going to use a fan brush. We're going to use a, this is a watercolor brush, and that's for some fine uh, blending work. A filbert brush, which is a number six filbert, and a small flat brush. And we're going to use a script brush over here. And also there's a fine detail brush we're going to use also. And we need a palette knife. We also have a nice blend brush. It's a cheap uh, 50 cent blending brush. So you'll put your paints on your palette. This is my palette that I've used in the past. And you'll see that I have white and green. This is just the way I put it on my palette. You can put it on your palette any way you want. I put my whites here, my, my greens and my blues, and alizarin crimson, burnt sienna, and burnt uh, umbers over here on this side. And this is the mixing area within here. As you can see, this was a piece of uh, wood, and it turned green because of the various green shades I use all the time. But we're starting, when you start up for, in a painting such as this, uh, what I do is start with the, um, the sky first. So I take, I put a piece of tape, I develop my skyline and my horizon, put a piece of tape perfectly parallel right across, and then I start my sky first. And as you can see on this painting right here, we have alizarin crimson in here, and it's a gradual grade up to a ultramarine blue, a darker blue. And if you look at a sky, uh, specifically around the Jersey coast, you'll see this kind of hue all the way going up. You'll see a darker, darker on top uh, of your sky and lighter toward the horizon. And in this area, you'll see you know, various colors across the horizon. And in this case, I like to use alizarin crimson. So going back to this, this um, card over here, this storyboard, you'll see over here that I did this first. And then the next step would be to do the background water. And I already sketched on my canvas exactly what I want to have uh, developed for an oil-based painting. And this is the final result we're going to go for. So first we make our sketch of the painting on here. So now that, now that, now that you know exactly what you want, um, you know where you're going. And that's important. You have to know where you're going in order to develop a painting. But in this, in this way, in this um, procedure, anybody could do a painting. 
So first I do the sky. Some people might not want to do the sky first, but that's, this is just the way I do it. An artist could develop the way he wants to um, develop his paintings. So the next thing I do is the background. So in the background, I'll use ultramarine blue, I'll use a um, sap green, and it, and it all depends on the ocean at the time. It depends on what part of New Jersey you're, you're, uh, you're in. It depends on the time of the day. It, it depends on the atmosphere. Uh, so in this case, it was a pretty clear day. So I used ultramarine blue, some sap green, painted the background in, and as you can see, this is the outline of the background waves, of, of the front wave here, the, the main wave, and that's what you'll see over here. So basically coming over to here, you'll see, you'll see a bits of green with the uh, ultramarine blue, and to make the motion of waves in the background, you'll have to use a lighter blue, something like a sky, the sky to re that is being reflected off of the waves. Um, the wave will have um, a reflection. So if the, if the sun is back in this, the, this area right here, and the shade is going to be in this area, you'll see a, a very light area in the back of the wave and the face of the wave will be darker. And that's how you develop and, and get that effect of background swells and waves. So after I do that background, I want to start developing the, the foreground right in here. And to do that, I'll use uh, burnt umber, and I'll make a grade going back into a lighter area over here. And as you can see over here, this is one area I did with the same method. So I used a burnt umber mixed with some white and um, I put streaks in over here with a, a little bit of um, ultramarine blue. But I didn't put this wash in here yet. I just did this whole area with burnt umber, um, permalable white, a little ultramarine blue, I threw a little gray in there too. And then once you get that area in and it dries, then you want to make little specks of sand. So how I do that is I use three different colors. I'll start off with a black or burnt umber and black, uh, mix that up with a little uh, mineral spirits, and I'll take a brush such as this. This is a, uh, a fan brush. And you dip that into the paint, the black paint, the dark paint, and I'll flick it onto the painting, just like this, right across the whole area of sand. And you'll flip these little bits of, of color that depict sand. And um, I guess you can't see it from back there, but if you get a close-up shot, you can actually see bits of sand in here. So basically, that's the first part of developing sand. The next, time, next thing you have to do is get a lighter color, such as cadmium yellow, and uh, you dip your, you clean your brush, and you dip that into cadmium yellow, and uh, you do the flicking process again. You just gradually flick that little, little sand particles into your painting, your foreground that you painted already. And once you get the yellow in there, now you're going to go with one more color, blue. You make a blue out of the ultramarine blue and a little bit of white. So it's more like a sky blue. And you clean your brush and you do the same thing. You dip your um, fan brush into the paint and then you just flick that on. So once you've developed this painting with these little small flicks, it'll actually look like sand. And you could keep it going, you could keep going. You could do other colors if you want, a, another brown type of color or a lighter sand color and just keep on flicking that on so that it actually looks like sand. And uh, it gives it a nice effect. So that, that would finish this storyboard, which would be 
the sky, the background, ocean, and the foreground, sand area. So now you will see, basically, if you have a canvas, if I, and you start with a black, blank canvas, you'll have this on your, your canvas, and you'll look at it and say, what is that? Well, it'll develop. You have to have some patience, that's all. <laughs> so this is the next thing we want to do. We want to start developing the main wave. And um, in this, we'll use sap green, uh, combined with a little bit of burnt umber and some raw sienna. And you always want to start with your values that are darker first. Your darker values will go in first. And you'll lay that in with a, you can use a filbert brush, or you can use a small flat brush. Uh, but basically a filbert will work good for that. So going back on this side, you'll see that I'll do all these dark areas right here first. I'll lay that in with that dark paint. And what I like to do is put all the paints and colors and values that I'm going to be using on my palette before I even start this. I, I won't just say, okay, let me do some brown and now I'm going to go mix up some other color for this medium mid-tone and then I'll mix up some other color for the light tone. I won't do that. I'll just have everything ready to go on my palette. And so basically we'll have, after the darks, we'll go to the next value up, which would be a lighter mid value right in here. And then we'll have a lighter tone right in here, which is the light showing through, which you'll see up here also. That's the light showing through. So now once you get that in, in, in you you develop this portion of the painting, you have to know already where you want your foam. Know that foam is going to be in these lighter areas right here. So we, know, we have to know where we're going uh, to uh, make a painting. We have to know that we're looking to do this. So, and then you just have to know how to get to that. And this is how you get to it. So you, you get your values, you start painting, you put your, your uh, dark tones in, middle tones, and light tones, and then you blend that together. So you get your blending brush, like this, and then you'll blend, and I like to blend from the light into the dark. If you go from the dark to the light, you'll get dark inside your light and you're not gonna get that nice translucency. So what I do over here, so if I had this brush, in this case, I would start up here and just slightly swirl and come down into the dark and it'll kind of blend really nice. And also in here, you'll, you'll blend all this together just with a swirling motion. And then, and then actually give it a little sweep like this. And then here, what you want to do is blend this down and then bring it down with the motion of the wave. So now that you have the, um, this main wave done, we're going to go with the, what we want to do is we want to start with the next area, which will be the foam. And this is how you develop the motion of the wave, trying to get this foam in here to look like an ocean or a wave. And that's it's one area where people have a hard time with, but it's pretty easy. All you have to do is use a brush such as a, um, I wouldn't use a filbert, but I would use a, a, a liner brush at times. I use a small, it's a small flat brush where you could just now mix your paint up. Which, now this would be not pure white because you'll have to, you'll see right in here there's a shadow. There's the white, there's a cast shadow right here. It's called a cast shadow. And the shadow of, a fo of foam is actually a purplish, dark purplish color. And so you'll have to make up that color. And you'll see that over here, this purple right in here. And uh, that color is made with ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, maybe a little bit of Mars black, and a little bit of white, and you'll come up with that cast shadow right in there. And that gives it that effect where it's in the dark and it's, the wave is actually coming over. 
So you want to develop that and, and then you just start painting your foam in. And you have to just study a wave and study the wave that you're doing and, and just try to duplicate what you have as your reference. Now this, this paint down here is not pure white. This paint is white with a little bit of uh, burnt umber. It has a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue in it. Um, and, it, and then what you want to do, so that's a medium, like a medium tone. And so you paint this in, and, uh, but before you paint this in, you want to get these green, <coughs> these green marks in here. This is where the foam, of course, is not. It's, uh, these are like bubbles that, that opened up. And in order to do that, you can use a small brush like this, with a flat brush, and put sap green on there, the darker sap green, which would have been around the mid-tone of this wave. And then you just start painting the, this in as, a, as, a, uh, as the reference photo shows and indicates. And uh, you want to develop some kind of motion in this. So for instance, in here, you'll see the wave go up and down right in here. So you'll paint that so that this is going down, then this portion is going down this way. You have a little peak here. And you'll, you'll see that you'll be developing your own style and you'll be able to do this with a little practice. Um, for instance, over here, this is a flatter area in here. So the wave came down, it's this, this back, this front wash area is flat. And so this is more flat in here. But as you get in here and you see the motion of these waves in here, you want to create some kind of interest. If it was just all flat, then you know, you'll probably lose some interest in it. And, and this was before Hurricane Sandy, so you know, there was a lot of motion in the water at that time. So once you do that, you'll come over here and you'll see that uh, you'll see that you're starting to develop the foam and the darkness of the foam, you might not be able to see it, but that purple is back here in this, this photograph here. And these are photographs of the, paint, of the painting I did of Sandy also, which is similar to this one. And now we're going to put the foam on the edge, this edge of the foam right here. We're gonna start putting this foam in. So to do that, you're starting off with your darks also. And uh, always, it's always good to start with darks and work to your lightest lights. Um, if you start with your lightest lights and work the other way, uh, you're not gonna get the contrast that uh, you're looking for. So what you wanna do is you get the permeable white, add a little gray, which is basically Mars black, and you'll, you'll develop a gray. Add a little blue to that because foam is just not pure white. Uh, you'll see foam in shadows, you'll see it to be a purple, you'll see it to be a bluish color. Um, so in this case I wanted it to be a little gray, a little blue. So you put the blue gray tone in first, then you go to your next gray, which is just a little, add a little bit of white and you'll start to develop a little bit of foam uh, with a different uh, tone to it. And then finally you add more white to it, where it's almost pure white, but it's not pure white. It's a couple of shades down from a pure white. And so then you do your um, blending again. You take your blending brush, and you start from the lightest lights, and you blend it again with this rolling blending action. Go right across, and you blend that together. Same thing over here. You'll you'll just blend like this, and you'll blend everything together. And that's how you get your foam, it's pretty easy, actually. So, um, okay, so then you wanna do the foreground foam area, which is right in here. You wanna fill it, after you did the gray green, of course, you wanted to fill in all these areas with the white, the medium tone white. But then you have to do the foreground foam right in here. So what you do is you get your darkest darks first and work down to the whites, to the lightest whites. And you add um, to the permalable white, you use uh, black, you use blue, and a little bit of lizard and crimson, and do your darks first. And you just do a rounding motion like this with a brush such as this. And this is how you could develop 
that kind of forward motion of your phone. And once that's done, then you get a add a little bit of white to it, and and just do it again. Add on some uh, color to that and roll it over as it as it indicates coming forward toward you. Now, once you get that done, you're still going to have this area of sand. But what I like to do is put a little wash in there like this. So you just get some white, some blue, and a little bit of alizarin liz crimson, and you water it down with, um, you can use a medium, or you can use uh, mineral spirits, and just wash that with your brush right across like this. And you just wash it right across, and uh, let some of that tone, the sand tone, come through. And that'll give it an indication of, uh, of light water with a little bit of foam in it and reflection. The final steps in all this would be adding highlights. Highlights are important because that'll give you that little pop that you're looking for. And the only way to get that is if you started off with your darks first and end up with your lights. So now you can use your pure white for your uh, highlights. And for instance, you could use a small brush like this. It's a very small tip. And if you want to um, get some highlights, you just do some flicking with the brush with some pure white. And it'll actually give a really nice um, uh, effect that the sunlight is bouncing off your foam and your, your water. And you could actually use your brush also. It takes time, but just to develop a little bit of uh, motion with that uh, wave that's coming in with with the use of uh, white, pure white. And once you do that, you'll be able to do this too. You'll be able to put some flicks of white in here. So it looks like there's some reflection also. And um, basically after that, you're going to want, to want it to dry and you'll leave it on your wall. And every time you come down and look at it, you'll say, wait a minute, i got to work on that some more. And this is what an artist does, too. They'll look at it and they'll say, no, I'm missing something. So you might go back to the sky and add some, some clouds, you could have some streaky clouds, or you could add clouds. Or, or I don't like to add too many clouds, because when I go down to the ocean, I see, if I see it's bright, I like it bright, and I want to keep it bright. So maybe just a little streak here and there. But then you'll, then you'll see that maybe you need some more sand, reflections of sand, or you want to put some water reflected in on the side. Um, there's various things you could do, and you'll see. Um, maybe you'll like it. Maybe you'll just say, well, that's my masterpiece, and you'll say, I want to frame it now. So what you'll do is let it sit for about a month, and then you could varnish it with a, um, with a retouch varnish. But you're not supposed to varnish a painting for six months because it takes that long to dry with regular varnish. And there are various varnishes. You could use gloss, you could use uh, a matte, or like a semi-gloss varnish. And then you want to frame it. Framing is very easy. I suggest that you learn how to do it yourself because it's, uh, it's expensive. <laughs> and you could buy frames at uh, various art stores and it's very easy. I'll show you how to do it on this. What we do is, and this is what we did in our class with the fourth graders. I showed them how to frame, and uh, we put it inside the um, the frame. And in this case, I just used nails to to hold it in. Um, what we did, and the other, because we used plain air frames, we had clips that we screwed in. And uh, after that. You just when when you get a uh, a frame, it comes with these side clips, and then you know it also come comes with uh, some string, so you could put your string in there. It's actually a metal metal type of string device, so it's very easy. You do that yourself, and you could buy any type of frame you want. You could buy plain air. You could buy these more contemporary looking frames, or more elaborate Victorian frames. And that's it. That's how you do a painting. Wow, Dennis, that was outrageous. 
just sitting here and listening to you, it uh, gave me such a, a greater uh, appreciation of how you create art um, and how long it takes and what's involved. I mean, it was, it was a really, really fabulous uh, demonstration and I'm sure our patrons at home um, also feel the same way. So that's it for our part two of our uh, virtual demonstration. Again, Dennis, thank you very thank much. You. And our viewers at home, please check out our webpage at dowdow.org, Facebook, Instagram, for any um, daily updates. Bye, and don't forget to join us for our next virtual exhibit.